What's going on guys? If you love potatoes, cheese and bacon, then this recipe is definitely for you. In this one, I'm gonna run you through the quick and easy steps to make these loaded Hasselback potatoes that are seriously incredible. Please sit back, relax and enjoy. All right guys, seeing as this recipe is to do with potatoes, we're obviously going to need them and I'm personally gonna be doing this with four all-rounder white potatoes. With these, let's set up a little guider using skewers or chopsticks with one placed either side sitting nice and snug, which is going to prevent us from being able to slice the whole way through the spud. With the first four slices we make, we're not going to cut down to the skewer as the ends are smaller than the center, so we're only going to slice a little bit to avoid cutting the whole end off, and we don't want that to happen now. I will say too that the skewer or chopstick method is optional, but it is the easiest and most effective way to make consistent slices, and consistent slices equals consistent cooking times. Once that's accomplished and we've created our potato slinkies, let's then lay them to rest on a baking tray lined with parchment or baking paper. And if you happen to make more than this, just keep in mind to leave sufficient space between them. That way we can get these crispy rather than a soggy mess. The next stage for these bad boys is to fill them up with some small slices of cold salted butter. And I think three slices, which is equivalent to one teaspoon or seven grams is enough. And as you can see, I've evenly distributed it to get that flavor to flow right through. Season these up with one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes split between the four. And of course, seasoning is the taste. I just like to give you a little guideline. And also we can't forget the one teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper. Once that's all done, let's then make our way over to a preheated oven that's set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for 45 to 50 minutes, spinning the tray around halfway through. Now in the meantime, to make our filling and condiments, prepare yourself four rashes of streaky bacon, which has a combined weight of 220 grams or 7.7 .7 ounces. Slice the bacon in half, creating two long strips to which we can then rotate 90 degrees and dice into nice little pieces, or depending on the size of your bacon, you may have strips, but it really doesn't matter and you can even serve the bacon whole if you really wanted to. Place a pan onto your stovetop over medium high heat and while still cold, add in the diced, stripped or whole bacon to which we're going to fry for four to five minutes using the bacon's rendered fat to cook itself until nice and crispy, giving it a stir regularly. Once that's achieved and the bacon's cooked to your liking, which in this case is golden and crispy, this can then be removed from the stovetop to cool down for the time being. Now to make a guacamole, get yourself one large and ripe avocado and to open this up, make a slice into the center until you can feel the seed, then very carefully run your knife around the avocado staying in the same spot to make a smooth opening, then locate the slice, which I've actually just lost, twist open the avocado to reveal the beautiful flesh, then carefully and gently hit the seed, giving it a little twist and place it into a compost bin. We can now use a spoon to remove the flesh from the skin, simply running it around evenly, place the skin into compost, Add the flesh of both halves into a mixing bowl and using a fork or really whichever tool you want to mash up the avocado exactly how you like it whether it be a complete paste or a little bit chunky. Now the next ingredient is one small red onion and after cutting off the tip leaving the root intact slicing it in half through the root and saving the scraps for a stock make thin slices across stopping just before the root to keep it intact slice through horizontally to break up the layer formation and dice into small to medium sized pieces or to your personal preference. Next, grab yourself two small tomatoes or one large tomato, cutting it into thin, even-sized slices, then cut each slice into strips, rotating at 90 degrees to dice it up into small pieces or again, to your personal preference. Lastly, we need one lime for its delicious flavor, freshness and acidity, so let's slice it in half and extract the juice of both halves placing any scraps into compost. Now to assemble, add in the diced red onion, the diced tomato or tomatoes, and lime juice into the smashed avocado, along with one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes, and one teaspoon or 10 cracks of black pepper, which is completely optional, because I know some people don't like putting pepper in their guacamole. Then let's give this a good mix, combining all of those flavors, allowing them to become friends. And once that's done, pop this aside until we're ready to serve. Last but not least, here is the green stem of one spring onion or scallion, and we're just going to thinly slice this into either diamond or circle shaped pieces, depending on the angle that you cut it on. And this is going to be used as a garnish, so we can just pop this aside for the time being. Going back to the oven after 50 minutes, the potatoes are looking perfectly golden and cooked through, which means we can get them out and place them onto a heat resistant surface. Here is some small slices of American cheddar cut the same size as the butter. And with this, we're going to do the same thing, placing three slices evenly throughout the potato. Using a microplane or grater, grate over some more cheese. And like I said, I'm using American cheddar, but this can be done with mozzarella if you can't get hold of American cheddar. The chunks of cheese are going to melt through the potato and the grated cheese is going to give us a beautiful crust on top, which is also going to be used as an edible 
incredible and delicious glue for our crispy bacon pieces. Talking about that, the next step is to load these up with the crispy bacon, evenly distributing it amongst the four potatoes. And if you have any leftover bacon fat, don't be hesitant to pour it over. It's literally more amazing flavor. Season these up with a little sprinkle of sea salt flakes across each potato, doing the same with some more cracked black pepper. Take your Instagram photos to show off to your friends. And by the way, you should follow me on Instagram, link in the description. Then make your way back over to the oven on the same setting and bake for five minutes to get that cheesy goodness melted throughout our potatoes. Now to serve these up, gently lay them down on a serving board or you can simply lay it straight into your stomach, the choice is yours. Top it with a generous amount of sour cream for a nice little freshness. Garnish it with the thinly sliced spring onion or scallion pieces. Don't forget about the guacamole, which I wish mine had a little more green to it, thanks to the avocados. And then that leaves us with one final and most important step, which is that we can then scoop up the condiments and then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves four and can easily be double, tripled and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge for up to four days or in the freezer for up to six months. And to reheat it, just simply place it back into an oven set on 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and just heat it up for around 15 minutes or so, just until the center's nice and hot and that cheese has started melting again. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss one I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.